looks really you, you good. You taste it. Well, you can taste it too. I'm gonna get my own. I'll get oh. my fork. So you just wanna cook this until the onions, you know, become translucent. You got, where'd you go? Oh, right there you go. <laughs> and then we're gonna add a couple cloves of garlic. Okay. So let's get, I'm just gonna go over to the refrigerator. And then we're just gonna sprinkle some cheese on top and then we're gonna stick it in the oven. Hi, welcome to Cooking for All Seasons. This is Judy Keys and my pal, Jean, who's going to be making crepes today. A little lesson in crepe making. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Trader Joe's uh, for sponsoring and getting us all these goodies. So what are we gonna make today? We're, this is the name of this show is Anytime Crepes and Bacon Bread Pudding. It's kind of a strange combination, but it's kind of something that you might want to, crepes you can use anytime, day or night. You can fill it with anything, vegetables, you know? Mm -hmm. Brussels know. sprouts and cheese. Haven't had one yet, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but any kind of filling. But today we're going to make two different kinds. Uh, the first filling is a chicken and mushroom uh, filling. And the uh, second one is a dessert one. And it's got uh, like a custard in it with fried bananas mm. and chocolate and like uh, some toasted almonds. And it's very dietetic. Anyway, <laughs> but you know, I mean, the, the crepe itself isn't too bad. It's got a little bit of butter in it. We're doing butter today you know, but that's okay. You know, it, when you do these kinds of things, you know, the one thing about crepes is you can make a lot of them at one time, put them in your refrigerator or put them in your freezer and they'll keep for a long time. Oh. So we're going to do some crepes and we're going to do some fillings, some different kinds, some savory filling and a sweet filling. But the first thing we're going to do is make a bacon, onion, cheese and apple bread pudding with a pumpkin custard. Now the custard is the egg and the cream or milk. In this case, we're using some heavy cream and some milk. I want to lighten it up a little. Lighten it up a little bit, okay. Um, so let's, let's just get started doing that. Um, we've cooked the bacon uh, already. We've rendered the bacon. You want the bacon crisp because you don't want it to be real uh, some people like their bacon kind of half done, mm -hmm. but in this case, you don't really want half done bacon in, in this bread pudding. You kind of really want the bacon crisp because it's going to give you some texture. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to shred uh, an apple into it, a couple of apples into it, and we're going to add some, about a half a cup of pumpkin. Now, this is not pumpkin pie filling. <laughs> If I, you did do it, I don't think it, I don't I don't think it would hurt it. It would kind of change the taste because this does not have any sugar in it. Right. And the pumpkin pie filling has sugar in it and it has nutmeg in it and it has allspice and cinnamon. Yeah. Um you could do it. You could do it. I don't think it would taste bad, but in this case we're making it savory. It would change the texture too, wouldn't it? It wouldn't make yeah, it Yeah, because the pump you know, I'll show you the pumpkin is is much denser. Very solid. Yeah. And and yeah, and the pie filling is much more liquid. Right. And you probably would get more of the sweet than you would the actual pumpkin flavor cuz we're only going to use about a half a cup because pumpkin is is pretty flavorful, mm -hmm. you know, by itself. If you have a sugar pumpkin, which are those little pumpkins, they're about this big. Oh. You can cook that and use that too. Oh, you know, okay. if you're one of those really earthy people, like, you know, that like to do all that kinds of things. And well, it's, it's like cooking a squash, mm -hmm. you know, but in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and use the, the uh, pumpkin. You could actually put, you know, butternut squash in this, you know, pureed butternut squash, which would be good too, because it's got flavorful. You know, we're gonna do some onions. We've got the bacon and the apple and the cheese. So I think it would be okay. Sounds good. So I'm gonna go ahead. We've already cooked, like I said, we've already cooked the bacon and everything, but we have over at the stove, we have about a couple tablespoons of the bacon fat and a whole cube, eight, eight tablespoons of butter. <laughs> so this is not, this is not dietetic. <laughs> but you don't eat it every day. But you don't eat it every day. So. 
unless you make a whole one for yourself, and then you may eat it all every every day because it, it, it makes time. quite a large one. And like I said, it's really good. You could make it the day before and put it in the oven, and you know when your company comes or something for a holiday or, you know, I, I like to do brunches. I like I like midday type of things, morning like eleven o'clock, you know, sort, sort of things because uh, at a brunch you can serve anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you can cook savory, you can cook, you know, for, in this case, we're going to have the crepes we're going to make are going to have chicken and mushroom. So that's definitely something you could serve, Yeah. you know, at a you know, sort of mid-morning type of thing. And then the sweet one's going to have custard and bananas in it and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get that. Let's get started. So I'll tell you what. Why don't, well, I'm going to cut this onion up. In here we have, uh, let's see, we've got six eggs, two cups of heavy cream and a cup and a half of whole milk. So uh, why don't you go ahead, I, these are just some Granny Smith apples, mm -hmm. we'll just grate them into here. And then I'm gonna cut this onion up, let's move this, oh, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna put about a half a cup in here. Be careful of just pumpkin. So, let's over here. So it's just um, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch you while you cut up your onion at home. So it's kind of you, you don't want huge pieces, but it doesn't have to be diced real fine. And I sort of take the cheater's way of cutting onions up. You know, you probably should be really careful when you're you know when you're cutting. But I sort of I sort of do the cheater's way. You can see it kind of comes all apart and everything but um you know when you're when you have to do things for holidays and you have you know a lot of people coming over mm -hmm. it uh it makes it easier if you if you can make some things beforehand oh most the definitely. night before and uh and Let's then just pop guess. it into the oven if you can uh i think that in this recipe you could probably eliminate anything that you that you didn't want uh, you definitely, you could eliminate the, uh, well, you could actually, if, you could make this vegetarian very easily. You just don't put the bacon in. Right. Um, in that case, I probably would pump up some of the other flavors uh, if I was going to eliminate the bacon. Um, if, if it's because you don't eat pork, go with the turkey bacon. And uh, that would, that would be okay. Um, you could actually do pancetta. Uh, which is an Italian. Mm, that would be good. Yeah, pancetta is really good. <laughs> which is an Italian bacon that is not smoked. You could use apple smoked bacon. You can use pretty much any kind of bacon that that you like. Um, so okay, so we're gonna flip over here to the stove. Well, first I'm gonna grab the pan, and put the onions in, make it easier. So you can see right here. There's that cube of butter in there, and the le and about two tablespoons of the uh, the bacon fat that that we left in there. And then it's got because we cooked the bacon in here, it's got all the little the little crummies from the <laughs> from the bacon. You you need to you want to take the bacon out because you don't want to be cooking it anymore. Let's see. I wouldn't worry about the size of the onions, though I wouldn't leave big chunks because you want it to sort of, you know, uh, go, you know, sort of spread out inside of your bread pudding. So, how are we doing? Good. It's all mixed up. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the <laughs> stove. All right. Yeah, let's see. Let's move this over here. So you just want to cook this until the onions, you know, become translucent. You got, where'd you go? Oh, right there you go. <laughs> and then we're going to add a couple cloves of garlic. Okay. So, I mean, if you didn't really want garlic in there, and I mean, it only is going to have two cloves of garlic, which is not a lot, um, just a little bit of a flavor, you know, it's... And that's why, isn't that why they ask you or tell you to add the garlic after the onions are cooked? Because it, otherwise it'll... It gets burned really fast. Okay. And okay. people have a really hard time controlling um, that. And I, and I, it, garlic can 
turn just like that. And once it turns, you've got to throw everything away because there's nothing worse than burned garlic. Yeah. However, I have to say there's this new thing. My friend in, uh, in uh, uh, Miami, um, I just bought him like five pounds of Gilroy garlic. He's going to try, there's this new thing called black garlic. Oh. And I've, I've, never, I've never heard about it. I've never seen it. But I did, well, actually, I've never seen it in person, but I did see it in a, in a cooking magazine. Oh. And I, I can't remember how they did it, but uh, he was going to try uh, to make it. So you can see, you can see kind of what, the, what this looks like. You can see the pieces of, uh, of bacon in there, and the color has, uh, you know, it's picked up all the, the, the little nubbies of the bottom of the pan from the... Was that just one medium size or large onion? This was like a, I would call this probably a pretty large onion. I mean, it wasn't huge, but this is also a, what I call a summer onion. It's a little sweeter. Oh, okay. The, the yellow onions that you get in the wintertime are, are much tighter. And much, you notice you, you, don't, you can't even, you didn't really even smell it while mm -hmm. I was cutting it. Mm -mm, no, it's I a didn't. much sweeter onion. So I think if you, uh, it's just, if people could, you could use a white onion, which would be much less. Would be more mild or? It's much milder. White ones are much milder, oh, much okay. more mild. Um, especially if you can't get a, a if you, when you go into the market and you see these onions and they're like big, yeah, those great are. big ones, those, are, those have more of a tendency to be sweet. Oh, okay. The, the smaller the onion, the denser the flavor to me. I mean, I don't know if that's really technically true, but in the, and especially in the wintertime, the, the larger ones are harder to get. I mean, you can't get the Maui or, the, right. or the, the, the ones that come from back east, I can't remember. The ones you eat like an apple. I can't remember what they're called. I don't know. But anyway. I've heard somebody eating like an apple. I said, yeah, right. But they are. They're really sweet. But I, I, um, I just, and the prices of onions are sometimes really outrageous. What about so the I've, purple onions? Yeah, you could definitely use an, like an Italian red in this, definitely. And you know what you could do, which reminds me, instead of putting bacon in, you could do sausage. Oh, okay. So you could do like a chicken sausage. Actually, you could do a chicken apple sausage. You got apples in there. Oh, that's Why not? Right. I've you know? seen those, yeah. So that would be really good, too. Oh, that does sound good. You know, because some people don't eat, you know, if you don't eat pork or, you know, you're trying not to up your cholesterol count. Along with all that butter. Of course, you got a lot of butter in here, so, you know. But still, you know, you can kind of balance it out a little bit. And... Some, some of the chicken apple sausages are uh, already pre-cooked. Oh. So in that case, what I would do is I would slice it real thin. Some of them you can get that aren't, that aren't cooked. You know, they're like, uh, uh, if you go into some of these uh, grocery stores that are a little bit more high-end, sometimes they'll make their own sausages. Oh, okay. And then they'll make a chicken, like a chicken apple sausage or some sort of chicken whatever kind, you know pepper or whatever, um, but you can actually squeeze the, the uh, chicken out of the case, out of the so encasement. So it's more like so bulk it's, or... So it would be more like cooking the bacon, you mm -hmm. know. But if you couldn't, then what I would do then is I would just get, um, I would just get uh, some just regular chicken apple sausage and I would just slice it like really thin because you want it to get distributed. So everybody so gets So everybody gets something because everybody, if yeah. you leave big chunks of it, it, it won't, right. that you, you won't get the flavor because you're trying to get that flavor. Okay. So as you can see, these are getting done. We just kind of really want them to, the be is, because they're, they're going to cook in there, but they're not going to, um, the idea is to get that flavor. We got the, the core, the, the core of the onion, which I mean it'll cook, but you don't want somebody biting into the <laughs> core of the onion. But uh, you know the one the one thing you're going to have to be careful about in this recipe is that you have a lot of uh, you don't have a lot of salt unless you're you're taking the salt directly from the. Uh, from the bacon and if you're bacon I mean not all bacon you know they have that like 20 30 or 40 percent less oh. salt or something which is fine 
But you have to remember that if you don't have enough salt in in it to begin with, it, the flavor won't you, bring won't, out. It won't bring out your flavor. Flavors, so you yeah. got to be careful a little bit about you know eliminating. I, if you're like on a salt-free diet or something like that, this then you have to use one of those um, sort of fake substitute substitute salts. You know, but. Um, this butter, this butter that I use has salt in it. Oh, okay. It, you can use unsalted butter. Okay. But it, when you're using unsalted butter, you have to remember that you're using unsalted butter, so the flavor is not going to be there. So this is looking pretty good. So let's take and I want to. I don't want it. I want these onions pretty much cooked because I don't want raw. I don't want that raw flavor the and that crunch, crunch from the onion. I want yeah. it to be soft. So then after this, what we're going to do is we're going to let this cool for a second because if we put it directly into that, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the bread in there first. Okay. Then we'll put the onion mixture in. Oh, okay. Because otherwise this will cook the eggs. I, I was just going to say that. And it, it'll eggs actually and curdle, uh, it. curdle the eggs yeah. and, the, and the cream in there. We don't want that to happen. Right. Well, do you want me to put the bread yeah, in? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and put the bread in, and that'll be soaking it up. And now, then put now, the cheese in. Now, the bread that you used for this. I used, I, the bread that I used for this was a really light, um, it was a, a, a focaccia bread. And, and you can see it has a, it has a crust on it, mm -hmm. but not a real heavy crust. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be careful when you're making some of these bread puddings that you put a really heavy crust in there. I mean, so they're good, but they're not going to absorb a lot and, of and the moisture. And then you'll, when somebody takes a bite, it'll yeah, really it kind of, and it gets chewy, a little chewy, I think. I mean, it's good. So I, if you have leftover bread or whatever leftover, I wouldn't use like a, what people call what, an air bread. <laughs> You know, really light, soft. like too soft. It's got to have then some. Be mush. Yeah, it, yeah, it has to have some some heavier consistency to it because you don't want it to. It'll just fall apart. You gotta. Should I just use this? Here, wind? here, I got one for you. Here you go. So go ahead, and then we're gonna add in the um. The bacon. We'll add in the bacon. And how much bacon again did you use? I used about. 12 ounces or so, you know, um, and then ooh, the cheese. And you have two kinds of cheese. Yeah, I put in, uh, this is a sharp cheddar and a combination. I decided we try a combination of a Greer and Swiss, just because mm. we're being a little bit, I mean, you don't have Experimental. to. Experimental. We're just sort of, yeah. You know, I mean, you got to kind of go and just kind of, Ooh, it already looks kind of good. Yes, it I does. I like it. Okay, I'm going to check these onions. They're looking good. So I'm going to turn them off. And I'm going to add in the garlic. You notice I'm adding in the garlic at the very end when the pan is already cooking because the garlic will definitely cook. So I have actually the equivalent of maybe one, one large clove. And I'm just, I would make sure that you chopped it pretty fine because you don't want anybody like chomping on a piece of garlic. Or maybe you do, I don't know. <laughs> but then garlic will definitely cook. You can see this is, this is uh, very uh, warm. So I'm just making sure that you get that garlic sort of dispersed. It smells good. I'm not going to even talk about smell of vision because... <laughs> <laughs> and this is in a, uh, this pan is, is, is great. It's a, it's a, I don't know, an alum, uh, iron. It's iron. Yeah. And it, it gets hot really fast and it, the only problem is that it does stay warm. So we just want to get these to kind of cool down a little bit. That looks good. Well, they did cook down. Oh yeah. I mean, you can really tell the difference. So let's get this. How's this doing? Looks good. Oh, look at it. Pretty much absorbed a lot of it, huh? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a moment now and uh, let the onions uh, cool down a little bit. And let's see. What should we do? Should we just go ahead while they're cooling down? Maybe we'll 
go ahead. We've got to make the crepes. And the crepe mixture has to uh, sit for about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So while the, you know, the, the I don't know, the crepe dough or what, I don't know how you want to call it. But it has to sit because it wants to absorb all the flour and everything. So why don't we go ahead and we're going to move it over here. And while the onions are cooling down, we'll move that over there. Now, if you don't have a mixer, don't fret. You can do this all by hand. Or you can do it with a little hand mixer. It's just, it's just that easy. But today, we're going to do it in here. Okay. Now, are we making the savory crepe? Well, if the, cre oh, oh, the, oh, crepe, the crepe, the crepe, crepe itself. no, but that's really, but that's a good point. Because in this case, we're not making a sweet crepe mixture or we're not making a savory, savory crepe. You could, you could, if you were only going to make savory crepes, you could add into the dough, uh, into the, the crepe batter, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, herbs. You could, but I don't know if I would add in fresh herbs. I'd probably be really careful about that, but you could. Uh, you could add in some thyme and rosemary, whatever, whatever, if you were going to make a particular type of crepe. I see. You know, mm -hmm. or if you were only going to make sweet crepes, you could actually put some sugar in, oh, into okay. the crepe batter. But okay. in our case, we're making both the savory and the sweet. So we are, but we're only making one batter. So it's just plain. It's just plain, I but see. it's plain with a lot of butter. Oh, okay. Is that a lot of butter? Another <laughs> lot of butter. But it makes it really easy when you're making the crepes because you have to, you know, fry them and, the, you know, have to put them in the pan and it makes it easy to flip, flip. them around. Oh, yeah, cause dear. These crepes, <laughs> these crepes are cooked on both sides. Oh, okay. Uh, when I make blintzes, uh, which is a, uh, it's like a, a pot, it's a, it's a crepe, but it's filled with uh, either ricotta or farmer's cheese. And then you only cook on one side. Oh. And the cook side goes on the inside, and you fill the you fill the uh, inside with uh, the uh, the mixture, the the ricotta or farmer's cheese. Some everybody makes them different. It's mm -hmm. one of those things. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of what your mom made, how your mom made them. They're uh, they're really good. And then and then, but then you fry it in butter. So the other side oh. that hasn't been cooked, when you go to cook them, you fry it in butter. So. Here we go again, more butter. And then you serve it with sour cream and fruit. That's a different kind. That crepe is a little bit more eggier than this crepe. This oh. crepe is not quite as eggy. So let's go ahead and put get those together. It takes four eggs. I'm gonna get my, I know, this is probably one where you really wanna, it, once you get used to making it, you don't, you don't have to, uh, you need another egg? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I rolled one over here. Oh, here it is. Oh. Ah! <laughs> A little runaway. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. We're going to cook you. So uh, we need a couple cups of flour. Now, you want to get a, just get one of those bowls, any kind of bowl. That's good. Yeah. And, and in this case, um, we want to put the mix, the dry mixtures first. Now, you guys know I'm not the best baker, but in this case, I try to do what I'm supposed to do. So it wants you to put uh, two cups of flour. So this is just all purpose flour. So we're going two cups of flour and two teaspoons of kosher salt. So the salt's over there. You know, for somebody who doesn't bake, I seem to run out of flour all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. I must have neighbors that borrow my flour or something because I just don't bake enough to warrant using that much flour, but for some reason. And a couple teaspoons. Now, I know people are going to go, well, it doesn't have to be kosher salt. Well, if you don't use kosher salt mm -hmm. and you use regular table salt, you have to use less because kosher salt is not as uh, salty. That's all I can say. It's just not as salty. 
And so be really careful. It's not as fine. Either. No, it, it, it sort of lays on things like when you, when you sprinkle it, you, you actually use less of it because it's more of a, how can I say, it's flatter. Okay. As opposed to uh, regular salt, it's much more, yeah, it's more flaky. Thank you. That was the cameraman who came up with flaky. <laughs> I'm not flaky. The salt's flaky. Is that what you meant? Okay. Um, so you just want to make sure that if you're going to use table salt, and that's true for, and I, I'm just going to say that it's true for brining too. A lot of brining things, um, It'll ask you, it'll tell you to use kosher salt, but it'll also a lot of times have a conversion for using table salt, yeah. which will be less. So, okay, so I'm being good. I, I'm doing this like you're supposed to, I'm just mixing it around so it gets distributed evenly. Okay. Now, uh, you want to put, let's put uh, the four eggs in here, and I'll get the milk. We need milk. We need two cups of milk. I'm not one to crack the egg and do it with one hand. I'd use two hands. <laughs> I don't as long as you don't get it in shell. as long as you don't get the shell in. I watch. And 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 just to, just as a note, I'm not I'm just gonna tell her this. When when you're cracking eggs, you should never crack it on the edge. It's just it's just it's fine. It's fine. And the reason being is that sometimes if you crack it on the edge some of the uh, shell can actually fall in. So in reality, you should crack it into a separate bowl and then move it into here. But we didn't do that. I see. Okay. But I just, that's just, that's <laughs> fine. So then we're going to add a couple cups of milk. And then, so let's see. Okay, here you go. Then we're gonna, uh, this is gonna make a little bit of a noise. Okay, this is a cube and a half of unsalted butter. That you melt it. Yeah. Down. Do if you do not use unsalted butter, do not put the salt into the oh, okay. uh, you know into your flour. Okay. Because it, you can put some salt in it later when you taste it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put the salt in it because it, it, they they may come out too salty, mm -hmm. and you don't want to go through all this and then end up with salty crepes. So I'm just gonna add. And the butter has to be cooled, melted but cooled. If you put hot butter in here, you're gonna have eggs because the butter will curdle the eggs in oh, here okay. inside the milk. So if, if you, and I know, ask me why I know this. Okay. Because I've done this. <laughs> I actually, did, I was like, oh. I think we've all done darn. stuff like this. And it's like, ugh, you know, so. Do yourself a favor and don't do that. <laughs> because you'll be really mad at yourself. And you have to beat this for about a minute. I'm sorry. Now see, see it looks good. Mm -hmm. You can see because now the, the, uh, the, uh, um, the, the butter has begun to incorporate itself into the into the mixture rather than these little lumps, which I like I said I've done before. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and let it go, and we're gonna add the flour. Now this is gonna have to sit for about twenty minutes or so, and while it sits for twenty minutes, we're gonna be making the filling. It wants to sit because it wants to make sure that all the flour and everything has incorporated itself. It's sort of like when you make pancakes and they tell you, let it sit for a few minutes. Okay. Have you ever, have you ever done that? And, it, and then when you go to mix it, it kind of gets a little bubbly kind of looking or 
That happens when I make that, the, you know that, okay, I'll say it. You know that Jiffy Mix? You know when you make Jiffy Mix, the cornbread? I know, okay, I do it because my husband eats cornbread and, and sometimes I, I shouldn't be eating cornbread. And it'll tell you to let it sit for a, a minute or two. And when you do, it kind of, kind of puffs up. Oh. So. Ooh, that looks so good. So let's scrape down the sides. I have, I thought I had, oh yeah, I do. I just want to make sure that all the flour has gotten incorporated in and that, you know, because sometimes down at the bottom things get stuck, you know, when you're, yeah, you're just scraping when you're, the I'm just scraping the sides, yeah, and then just wiping it out on the, on the beater to make sure you can kind of see where the, I don't know if you guys can see, can you see the flour lumps? Mm-hmm. Can you see the flour? So you just want to make sure it just kind of all, and that's the reason why you want it to sit because it's got all that butter in there too. And these come off real good in your, you know, when you're making it because, let's see, yeah, okay. So we're just gonna let it mix for a few seconds. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this out can you guys, I think you can hear me, and then um, finish our bread pudding. Okay. So, all right. So, let's just, can you see? It's mixed. You know, you don't see any big lumps. Mm -hmm. You don't see the butter that hasn't separated out, so it's nicely mixed. I'm just going to put this in here. We're going to move this over here and let it sit for a minute. Take this. Like I said, if you don't have a mixer, use a hand mixer. If you don't have a hand mixer, use your hand. A whisk or something. Just a whisk or, or a wooden spoon, whatever, whatever you have, you know. Okay. All right. Now, let's go ahead and bring that back over here. Let's see, we can put this in here. Whoop, we're dropping papers. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so here's our onion mixture, and it's definitely cooled down. I mean, you just don't really want to put it steaming hot into here. One thing, it's going to melt all the cheese. Oh, that's right. And it's going to curdle the eggs. And you can see, look at how nice this is. Mm, so if you want to go ahead and mix it. Oh, here. They smell so good. Don't they smell good? Mm -hmm. I love the smell. Of course, anything that's got a cube of butter on it couldn't be. But you, don't, you really don't smell the... Um, Smell the onion. You sure. smell the onion, but you don't really get the, the garlic in there. But I think that it's like one of those underlying tones. So now I'm going to go ahead and... Sorry. I'm going to get all of it in there. Is this one easier? Yeah? No, it's fine. Okay. Okay, I'm using my fingers to get it all off. You don't want to miss it. That's what we all do. No, I won't do that. <laughs> well, I'll be I don't know, but we all don't do that. <laughs> I know. You shouldn't do that. You really shouldn't do that. So I wanted to. This looks want. pretty good. Don't you think that looks and good? It's, it's easier to turn, and it's, yeah, you, it's really, uh, yeah. I can see why you wanted the um, crustier bread, you know. Not, yeah, because not, if you put like really, really soft bread, it would just be a mush. Like be mashed potato. Yeah, you know? yeah and it, well, it, I mean, I think there are certain custards and, or, you know, pudding type things that you use really soft bread, but in this case, we wanted something a little more substantial. So now we're putting it into a nine by 13. Yeah, I mean, this is. You want me to? You want to take that? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
when I turn it. Okay, how's it that? This way. And you got that? And, and you, I mean, I know you really want to taste this. Um, I taste that. Um, I'm thinking maybe you have to be careful because, you know, it's got the raw egg in there. Well, this will puff up too, right? Oh, yeah, because it's got all the eggs in there. And also on the top, we're going to put another, see, empty. On the top of it. We're going to do what? We're going to put some more cheese. Ooh. Because. So remember, there's salt and cheese, so you just have to be really careful about that. So let's get, I'm just going to go over to the refrigerator, and then we're just going to sprinkle some cheese on top, and then we're going to stick it in the oven. And it bakes 45 minutes, and I think it's oh. in this one. Oh. 45 minutes or so. They have the orange, the shredded cheeses over here. I think it, it bakes for about... 45 minutes or so. You know, I mean, I think that you need to check your oven. I mean, it bakes at 350. So this is the Swiss and Greer. So it's like about another cup of cheese on top. I mean, if you don't really want to put it on, don't put it on. But we, it's good to have a nice little crust of it, but though. But we want to put it on because we, <laughs> yes, we, we want it. Yes, we do. Ooh, and it looks pretty. I like the, you know, if you don't use Swiss and Greer, you could use a Monterey Jack. Mm. And if you really want to change this whole thing up, you could use a Pepper Jack. Oh, that'll spice it up. Yeah, I mean, you could. I mean, this is something you could do just about anything you wanted to. I mean, I don't know if you're going to put the apple in it. That may, well, yeah, that would be okay. The apple gives it, what the apple does is gives it a little bit of sugar. Yeah. You know, and then you got the pumpkin you in You know, there. will it be like a mystery, what? Is that flavor yes. in there? <laughs> It'll be like Worcestershire sauce and uh, Worcestershire sauce and anchovy paste. People go, oh no, I never eat anchovies. But you know what? In a lot of pastas, there's anchovy paste. It's hmm. that underlying flavor that you're not really, can't quite put your... And Worcestershire sauce, guess what? It has anchovies in it. Yes, I saw that on the... Direct, uh, yeah. Ingredients. Here. So a lot of people think, oh, I never eat them, but there they are. You put this in. Yep. Go ahead. We'll put that in. The bread pudding is in the oven mm -hmm. and it's cooking. And now we've uh, made the chicken and the mushroom, and the shallots are on the stove. We've added some tarragon, a little pinch of tarragon, and a little pinch of thyme. Be really careful about the tarragon because tarragon is. This sort of licorice -y flavor, it's really good, but if you overdo it, It'll, it, it, it really won't. Overwhelm. It, yeah, the, it's, it's the really overwhelming. So you just have to be careful. But now, let's get the... Uh, oh, wait, before. You, you said you used um, ground chicken. Yeah, I used... Okay, that's right. Thank you. We, I, I use ground chicken. I make my own ground chicken. I get boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I grind them either in your Cuisinart, if you have a Cuisinart, or sometimes I just use my little tiny Cuisinart, it's little. Um, I, I don't particularly care for, for ground turkey. <laughs> and, but if you have to use ground turkey, go ahead. Uh, and I don't particularly care for ground chicken uh, breast. Oh, okay, so it is dark meat. It's all dark meat. If you can't use dark meat and you're really trying to watch your calories, probably wouldn't be making this, but you could really cut it. <laughs> That's true, too. You probably would cut down a lot of the butter and stuff, but, uh, you know, if you, if you can't, uh, then you could use the ground uh, chicken breast. The only thing I can say is be really careful and don't overcook it because it'll get really dry, even though we're going to add some cream so can you buy it. already ground you can buy already ground chicken and it'll say ground chicken and a lot of times it's a mixture of both chicken thighs and chicken breast and that's fine and that's fine. you you just don't want all and that's just for me if, if you can if you can uh, just use chicken thighs it has much more flavor to it that, okay. that's all you know okay. but I, I grind my own because um, well first of all a lot of times chicken thighs I can get on sale Boneless, skinless ones I can get on sale. Our, uh, you know, 
And the, sometimes they, they're, you can't find it mm -hmm. in some of the stores. So thank you for reminding okay. me. Okay, now, I, you know, I couldn't tell you, but you know what this is. This is instant jello pudding. So I use a French vanilla. This is gonna go into the sweet, the sweet crepes. This is gonna go with the bananas. Oh, okay. So this is sort of a cheater's way of making a custard. If you wanna make homemade custard, that's fine. <laughs> a lot of people do, and that's fine. I mean, you know, but this is sort of, a, sort of the way around not having to make homemade custard. Mm -hmm. And you can do this with like, if you wanna make, we're gonna use vanilla. I'm using a French vanilla. And what we're gonna do is, okay, here we go. Okay, we're using, cause you put with two cups of milk. Well, we're using a cup of heavy cream and it is heavy. I know, but you know, you're not gonna put that much in. And then we're gonna use um, a cup of uh, half and half. And not milk. No, you could use milk. But then it won't taste like, you're trying to, to make it not taste like the pudding. So I use a cup oh. of each. The idea is to sort of fake out your, your family <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. And, so okay, this is- So how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just say, oh yeah, you made that all by hand. Yeah, I did, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, mm, told me custard. Okay, so then we want to take away some of the box flavor because, you know, like, I don't know, but when you make some puddings, it kind of tastes boxy. Very pudding -y. It's pudding -y boxy. So what I'm going to do is, and this is a cream vanilla. Uh, a it, cream vanilla. See, see, I wanted to show it to you. See, it's, wow. it, it's a suspense. It's got the little tiny vanilla beanie thingies in it. It says, yeah, it says paste. Yeah, it's a paste. Vanilla bean paste. It's pure paste. vanilla paste. Where do you buy that? anywhere um you know what sometimes i know this is going to sound really silly but sometimes i actually find it at tj maxx oh yes where they have a lot yeah where of i the, have all the very the, different uh, the different stuff mm -hmm. and it kind of this this it when you add vanilla you don't you don't have the vanilla paste so you just use regular vanilla even if you're even if you're making a chocolate uh you know custard mm -hmm. i'm gonna call it it's a pudding really but you know, we're gonna call it a custard in this um, still use a little bit of vanilla. Okay. You know, it will, the other thing you could do if you were making chocolate, which would be really good, you could actually dissolve a little bit of, um, uh, you know, coffee, like, uh, instant, instant coffee, coffee in, in a little bit of hot water and add it to the cream. And then it would kind of make it a chocolatey coffee. Oh. And that would be really good. <laughs> cooled. Of yeah. course, right? Yeah, cooled. Yeah, out. you gotta just got it, you know. Not coffee, because because coffee won't make it as rich. But I mean, you know, if you if you don't want to use the cream and you want to use but I want to even you could dissolve it in milk, I guess. You have to be really mm -hmm. careful if you're gonna dissolve it in in the cream though, because you don't want to heat the cream up, it'll right. curdle. So you can see, look at it, it's already. Oh, it's very thickened. This one, make sure. There you go. See? It gets there. Well, this is the instant one. I mean, if you like to make the cooked one, you could. And in that case, you could add, you know, some coffee crystals mm, to it, right, a to chocolate it. one or something like that. But. So we're just gonna mix this like this, and then it just, you know, you don't have to mix it for very long, and then it's just gonna stand, but I'm gonna let you taste it. And you're gonna, you're gonna taste the difference. Between that and regular vanilla pudding. Between that and pudding. regular vanilla pudding. Oh, that is different. It is, it doesn't really taste pudding. I <laughs> Amazing. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of mm. fun. And it's kind of really fun if for any time oh, you're gonna use good. a pudding and you kind of don't really want people to know you're using pudding. Yeah, oh. But yeah. I honestly believe- I have a plan. Uh-oh. <laughs> I honestly believe now, so you can see it's getting really thick. So we're gonna set it over to the side and we're gonna finish the mushroom and chicken crepes. Okay. So that one's for our sweet. That's the, that's the sweet one. The sweet inside. The sweet's inside. And then what's going to go with that is going to go some fried oh. bananas. Ooh, yeah. And um, then some uh, uh, almonds, sugared almonds. Okay. Oh. 
So let's go ahead. We've got the, I want to show this to you. Uh, let's move it over here so he can see it better. Um, we've got the, the mushrooms and the, the ground chicken and a little bit of tarragon and a little bit of thyme uh, and, the, and a shallot, a chopped shallot. And then what we're going to add to this is some cream. Wow. Yeah. Who this knew? Is, who, who, who guessed, you know? <laughs> But it, it is, is, remember, you know, you don't necessarily eat all these things all on the same, all on the same day. Or um, all the time. Or all the time. Yeah. So, so about how much cream did you put in there? I put in anywhere between a quarter and a half a cup. Because okay. what it's going to do is you want it, the, it it's going to um, cook down and get, oh. and get kind of okay. creamy. And, and, and thickened saucy. or? Yeah, you don't have to add anything to thicken it. The cream itself, when it starts, uh, you know, boiling, will thicken itself. So okay. you don't want to add any, you don't want to add any, uh, like, flour or anything. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need anything right. to, okay. to thicken it up. Okay. So, okay, so we're going to put this on the back burner and let it, and let it finish. <coughs> okay. Da -da -da. Now it's oh. crepe time. Oh. So now we're gonna make some crepes. Okay, remember, so we made our batter. Look at how nice it is. Mm -hmm. It looks nice. Mm -hmm. Um, let's try not to have to add any more butter to it. Um, get yourself some really. You, they they don't have to be like the very very best pans, but. You want a pan that is um, with the Teflon. With the Teflon and make life a little. And probably keep one pan. If you make these a lot, keep one pan that you make them with, so that just for those. You know the kids don't use knives and forks and scrape them up. Though I mean it wouldn't hurt. So we're gonna heat it up, and we're gonna make small crepes. We're gonna make small crepes for the. Uh, We're gonna make the small crepes for the banana and for the, the dessert the ones. Dessert. Though I mean, it kind of would depend. If you were gonna have like a buffet and you just wanted to make uh, like the chicken or whatever kind of veg, you know, you can fill them with vegetables. You can do anything with them. And if you just wanted to put them out, you just want to make small ones. You can make all small ones. But if you're gonna serve dinner, I would suggest you just make a larger okay crepe. So we're gonna make a little bit of each. Okay. So I just use. Let's see, how can I do this? Okay. So the pan's getting warm. And you're going to take... Okay, now. You see this? You see what I'm doing? So I'm just gently rolling it around. And see, it's already beginning to... Oh, stick. because it's a warm pan. Because it's warm, oh, okay. and that's and it's already beginning to cook. So you're just going to put it on here. Pretty easy. And you know? do have your heat on high for right now. Yeah, because you're watching. Just, yeah, and what'll happen is, it's just like the first pancake. <laughs> everybody, everybody makes pancakes, and that first pancake just mm, doesn't look quite right. Is because you know your pan, you sort of get everything to the right temperature, and then it holds. Okay. So it's just kind of an experiment. You know, you just have to kind of let it. You know, sit for a moment and see where your best temperature is going to be for making your crepes. Do you want to slide them out over here? Yeah. So I'll just tear a piece of that off. The I'm just mixing this just... chicken and the mushrooms while I'm watching that crepe. The crepe has enough butter in it that you really want it to get a little toasty brown. So. And... You're going to try not to. And how do you know when you're, you think it's ready to whatever you're going to well, do now? Gonna be. Oh, you're lifting it to. Look at that. See? Oh, it's nice. Can you see that? Lightly, lightly brown. I didn't even have to put any butter in the pan. I noticed that. Now well, I, I saved butter. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you saved butter. I saved butter. butter. Well, you saved us. Yeah. <laughs> I just keep pounding this butter in. I, you can't help it. This, 
This one just happens to have, I mean, there, there's a lot of different recipes for pigs. I think you're just going to flip it over. Okay, so you see that it's just see, lightly, It's, it's going to get brown. Brown. You can get a browner. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of, usually cooks more on the first side than it does on the second side. But this is our first right. one out, so you actually could leave it in there. And so what you're going to do is you're go what you do usually is you make several of these and let them cool. Yeah, you just stack them. Oh, you, you just you just oh, I oh, mean oh, you just oh. kind of like put one and paper, then paper and paper. Yeah, you don't have to put paper in between them. Oh, there's enough. They're butter. not going to stick. Nah, or there's enough butter in these. <laughs> They're not sticking okay. together. So that's why you use all the butter. Yeah. It's that's the reason why we use a cube and a half of butter. <laughs> but actually, you would be surprised how many uh, crepes this is going to make. This is going to make quite a few. Look at See? That's pretty. It's pretty, huh? Whoa. Just don't let them fly off. But uh, it does make, really honestly, it makes quite a few. Yeah. It probably makes about 20, 25 crates. Okay, so if you don't need that many, what do you do? You make them and you store them. And you can put yeah. it in the refrigerator or freezer? Yeah, put them in the refrigerator or put them in the freezer. Oh, okay. If I put them in the freezer, I'd probably be a little bit careful about, you know, making sure that you don't, you know, so look at this. So we put this like this, it won't curl up and he can see what we're doing. Oh, okay. So see, how's that? Oh, very nice. That's a perfect one. Okay, you're up. Oh, no. Okay. okay. So here, we'll switch sides. It's already a warm pan. So just Did put... the little thingy... No, nope, it's fine. In? It's fine. So you don't need quite that much. Yeah. Because this is a smaller pan. Oh, okay. So a little bit less. Yeah. Then just wipe it on the side. There you go. I mean, we could probably get another thing to make it with. Oh, shoot. Nope. Put it in the middle. You just put and it in it, the middle. Uh, but that's okay. That's all right. Go ahead can... and swirl it around. Oop. Get it back over there. See, there you go. That's fine. Ta da! Her, Not first, bad. her very first crate. <laughs> See, it's easy. I mean, it really is. And I, I, the only thing is that. You, if you had an older child, um, they could make them. I would be really careful with a, a young child making this because you're dealing with a flame or a hot stove. Uh, I, I just kind of would be a little bit careful. But you know, for a, a young, you know, ten, nine, ten, depending on how how much they're used to using a stove. It's kind of a neat thing. You know what's really good in these is like ice cream and hot fudge and that kind of stuff. How do you do? Good. Look at that. <laughs> She's very excited. Well, that little corn is That's okay. Layout. That's all right. But you know, you can make these and you don't have to, you serve them warm in most cases. In other cases, you don't have to serve them warm. And you put like, you so you take like a, a ice cream you know, if you can buy ice cream like in the old fashioned oh, kind oh, in, in a brick, in a, a brick, brick yeah. then you can cut it and then you can just like lay a brick of uh, ice cream in it and then roll it and then we're going to, I'm going to make some hot fudge, mm. you know, or like a ganache. Oof. So how's it doing? It's oh, it's good. perfect. Okay. You're hired. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, see there. Look, see, and they don't stick because they no, they the don't. Butter it's amazing. Them. So now let's make a big one. So now let's see. warm up the pan. Move the pan. Now, so this is a, I don't know about a ten inch pan. I think, I think it says, yep, ten inch. Good guess. So, huh? Good guess. Good guess. <laughs> so that we're gonna make this. We're gonna make a few of these, and this is where we're gonna fill the mushroom. Oh, and, uh, stuff. and then we're on the mushroom one uh, goes uh, the mushrooms and the chicken and then it's going to have a little creme fraiche on it with a little uh, fresh uh, uh, chive and on the uh, on the uh, one we're going to have to now we're going to have to cook the bananas. OK, so we're going to put the custard and the bananas and then we're going to put um, you could put some more whipped cream on it, uh, but I'm going to put the chocolate sauce on it and then the, some uh, candied uh, almonds. OK. 
Okay, how so, much in this one? A okay. full? Yeah, a full one. So just dump, put it in the middle. Just wipe it out. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. <laughs> I can almost feel like a real... Creeper. Creeper. <laughs> Let's make sure oh, we spell that spell right that and correctly. everything. <laughs> Watch, don't give me any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's an easy thing to make, and I think that, you know, if you made them the night before, they're really easy to warm up. I warm them up in the microwave, and you can put scrambled eggs and bacon and cheese and whatever you want in them, you know, for breakfast or something. It's just kind of something kind of fancy. Wow, you know? very nice. You can put fresh vegetables, you can put steamed vegetables and cheese sauce and, you know, whatever. You got ve What's nice about it is if you have vegetarians coming and, and people who eat meat, you can make different kinds, you know. So, anyway, how's that one doing? All right, that's going to take a little bit more. Um, so, if you wanted to do something ahead of time so that the next morning... Yeah. You could do the breakfast thing or something. Could you, do you make this ahead of time? You may, yeah, you make. Or make all of these? Make all, I would just, I, would, I don't think that I would leave the batter. I would go ahead and make them. Because it would flatten or something, it won't Well, stay. yeah, you know, it just, I don't know. Okay, so so you would just make a bunch of these and then do you just, warm them up or? Yeah, just put them in the microwave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Now I know what to do for Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> Something so different. That? Yeah, it's still not. It takes not, a little bit longer. Yeah, it's huh? not not very brown. Okay, go ahead. There we go. So, all right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish making a few more crepes, and we'll be right back, and we're gonna cook those bananas. Okay. Ooh, beautiful crepes. Thank you. Beautiful job. I'm an expert. You're an expert now. You're a creper. You notice how I said that. Yes. Okay, banana. Yes. Custard. We made the custard. Now we're going to do the bananas. Okay. Okay, they take like two I'm gonna be, seconds. Go ahead and you can keep talking to the camera. I'm going to watch over here. Oh, okay. So I can see. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little bit of butter. Not a lot. Not just not a lot, and then we're just going to slice that, slice the banana into the butter. You can't do like a hundred of these bananas at one time, so you know. And you don't want them too thin, otherwise they just kind of mush out on you. So this is a this is about a. A pretty good sized banana. Okay, this part's for me. <laughs> well, then. Don't do this at home. Yeah, don't be flipping <laughs> stuff around and be flipping it out of the pan. Well, try it though. A little bit of cinnamon. Are we in there? Hello? Whoop, there you go. Fresh nutmeg, if you can. And where can you buy those? You know, you can get fresh nutmeg now in most stores. And it lasts for a long time. And Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it really does. But I'll tell you, there's a big difference between fresh there is. and, uh, you know, the stuff that comes already ground. Also, there's all different kinds of cinnamons. You know that? The cinnamon comes from all over the world. That's it. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Yeah. And I've, I've actually done, I think this one is, um, this is a cinnamon from a Penzi's. It's a, it's a place where I get a lot of spices. And you can go online and see. So then you're just going to flip this around. That's a little bit of brown sugar. You don't need much because remember you're, you've got all that, uh, the custard and everything. So you don't want it too sweet. And this is kind of caramelizing them a little? Yeah, just a little, just to kind of get them warmed up mm -hmm. because I think it tastes better. <laughs> it has a little bit of butter on it. <laughs> just not a lot. You just don't want to be, you don't want to cook them too long. They kind of stick to the, 
Okay, actually, that's pretty done. You know, when my daughter was a little girl, every morning I had to make fried bananas. She loved fried bananas. So there you go. That's it. It's real simple. Okay. Now, how's our... Seed? It's thickening, yes. Yeah, now we've got our mushroom and ground chicken, and it's uh, thickening. Our uh, pudding is done. Our bread pudding is done. So I'm going to say we'll see you right back here in a moment, and we're going to put together everything and show it to you. Okay? We'll be right back. I, okay, we're going to just make a little bit of like a chocolate ganache, and what I'm using is a dark chocolate, uh, big, huge candy bar. And then I'm just going to, most people, you have to be really careful with this. Use a double boiler, you know, honestly, this is kind of a, if you, if you don't have a double boiler, all you have to do is uh, boil some water underneath and you put a, uh, like a pan under, on top of it. Can you see? I'm not doing that. I'm sort of cheating today because I'm, but just, just be careful. Take it off the heat. Once it, if you're going to do it like this, once it starts melting, can you see what it's doing? Then I just put some cream in there. And so then you just want to get it to the consistency that you're looking for. And in our case, we want it to be, we want to pour it. It's going to get uh, solidified again. Oh, it will. Yeah, it probably will. So let's put a little bit more cream in it because we want more of a sauce. Put a little bit more cream in it. Oh, we're sort of see look at how nice it is. I mean this is really a fast way if you you know if you want to make sauce for your ice cream and mm -hmm. you know sort of like homemade hot fudge. But it's a regular dark chocolate candy bar. Yeah, it's just a dark chocolate candy bar. It's you if you like semi-sweet, use semi-sweet. If you like milk chocolate, use milk chocolate. Uh there's all these different kinds of bars now. There's 70% cocoa yeah. and 72% cocoa and 80. The more cocoa something has in it, the less sugar it probably would have. So it's not going to be as sweet. Mm -hmm. And I prefer dark chocolate. As do I. Okay. All righty. So we're just going to put leave this here. Now, this is off. You know, you don't, you don't want to be leaving chocolate because it will begin to curdle and separate and burn. It has, this has sugar in it, so. I've done the burn thing before. You've done the burn Hell thing? Yeah. yeah. I think everybody has. That's why, you, that's why if you're not used to doing it, definitely fill this with water then put like a glass bowl, you know, something like this or, or, or something and put it on top and let just the heat, the moist, the uh, steam mm -hmm. heat, heat it up. Right. And you won't have... But unless you do it really fast like I did it, you definitely will end up scorching it. Right. Okay. So, oh, okay. We put the filling on. So I'm going to show you. All you're going to do is one, two, and it's done. That's the chicken with the, That's the chicken. mushrooms. And then we're going to put a little salad with it because I think it, it is very rich. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. It is very rich. Uh, and then the other thing is because because I thought it needed something to sort of calm it down a little bit, I thought a little creme fraiche, which is not a sour cream, but it ha it's a, it's it might cut some. <laughs> so it's called creme fraiche. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you could actually make it. I can't remember right. I think it's. Uh, I'll have to give you the recipe. But it's similar to a... Uh, to a sour cream. Sour cream. If you didn't have it, I mean, you don't have to use it, but mm -hmm. I thought... No, but that sounds good. I thought a little dab, and I think it makes it look complete. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see. Let us get a knife. a knife. And this is just some chives, and I think that's some pretty chives on it. You know? What do you think? Good. So, you know, you, you can have a dressed salad, just a little bit of vinegar, you know, 
I wouldn't probably use balsamic. I'd probably use a white, uh, a red wine vinegar because you don't want any more sweet. So that's that one. Now, I'll put these over here. Let's do the banana one. So we're going to do a small. So we're going to put the bananas and we're going to put our custard in there. Do you have a spoon for these? Or just dump them? <laughs> Guess not. Guess not. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. So we're going to put a little bit of this. Oh, that looks good. Oop. Obviously, you probably want to use a spoon to do this, but we're... I have one. Oh, cool. Okay. I mean, this you could put... I mean, if you only wanted custard, you could only put custard. And then, let's put oh. some bananas in here. Okay. Oop. Oh, here, just put it down on there. It's not that much. Same thing for this one. You're just going to roll it. How's that? Then. Oh, the chocolate sauce. And then the, we're those almond. We got our sugared almonds. Let's move this out of the way. And then we're just going to do Honey roasted. Bit. Sliced. Yeah. Do you think you could eat that? I could force it down. Okay. And then we're just going to sprinkle a few of these. Looks kind of cute. Oh, beautiful. What do you think? I'll put this back in there. We'll move this out of the way. We're going to get you a fork, a knife and a fork. Okay, just going to take a taste. Can you hear this one? What do you think? Looks really you, you good. You taste it. Well, you can taste it too. I'm gonna get my own. I'll get my oh. fork. Ooh. And a knife. And I can use the same mm. knife. Oh, it tastes really good. Oh, I really like the creme fraiche on it. Oops, now how am I gonna turn this? Huh. Well, if the crepe was a little, I mean, remember we didn't warm our crepes up, but if the crepe was warmer. Really? Because I like it that way. Yeah? It's good, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. It's not as rich as you get. When you put the creme fraiche on it, it kind of cuts the, 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 the richness. And you don't have to put mm. a lot of filling. It's very good. Okay. Next. Okay. Here, you eat the middle one. Got more stuff on it, huh? Mm. Okay. Well, that tells you all about it, doesn't it? So I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to thank Jeannie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want to thank Trader Joe's uh, for being here. This is Judy Keys cooking for all seasons. And do yourself some crepes. Oh, wait a minute. Hold the show. What did we forget? The wait the, a minute. The, the bread pudding. Okay. The bread pudding. The bread pudding. Let us not forget. Most definitely. I think it's going to just come out. It looks really good. It's real cheesy. Ooh. What do you think? It looks delicious. So, should we taste? We should. Ooh, very airy. Yeah? I think the apples help it to be like that. Oh, that's right. I forgot there's apples in there. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Very good. Wait till you try this. Good. Good it's bread delicious. pudding. Good crepes. So, you know, treat your family. I know it's kind of a holiday type stuff or birthday, whatever special kind of event. special yep. event. But enjoy. Um, this is Judy Keys for Cooking for All Seasons. Thanks, Trader Joe's, and thank you, Jeannie. No, oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed <laughs> I it. I love this okay. part. Well, we'll see you guys later, okay? We're going to be eating now. Let's time it Okay, let's try some more.
pie. The real crunchy part. Where are we? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, we're talking to you. We're talking oh, we to talked you. to Bob this time. Hi, Bob. Oh, we always talk oh. to Bob. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> so you know you could make one one uh, order of them, so to speak. <coughs> Use them for that day. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Right. <coughs> I need water. Okay. Wait. Cut. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <laughs> Okay, Jeannie, you're fired. Sorry. Okay, who is next? <laughs> now you need to go sit down. Now you have to go sit down. It's good. Okay, we're done. We're not going to make any more crepes now. We'll make them later. Let's go to the next show. Oh, well, eat this. Can you eat this now? <laughs> His eyes going, excuse me. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Are we going to the next show? <laughs> <laughs>